good afternoon and or good morning whenever you're watching this but uh we're going to continue to read the boxcar children's book uh gertrude chandler warner's mike's mystery this is the fifth book in the series the boxcar children a uh, fantastic book uh, we left it off at chapter 11 which was pi day and today we're going to start we're going to read a chapter 12 <clears throat> an empty can and let me go ahead and start Chapter 12, An Empty Can. When Spot came up with a hat in his mouth, Finny cried, The blue hat! At last! The man was afraid to wear it, shouted Mike. This proves that the man was up to no good, said Henry slowly. slowly. And he is the man in the picture, shouted Mike again. And this time, I would know him for sure. I think he knows that, said Jesse. We must tell Mr. Carter about this. Well, Jesse... I'm sure Mr. Carter knows it already, said Benny. Mike looked at Benny with a frown. The frown said, Benny, don't talk too much. <clears throat> Henry said, well, let's give the dogs the bones and go up and see Mr. Carter. But they did not go. For Watch suddenly began to dig again. Then the children noticed that the ground was soft. It did not take long and Watch did not growl. But soon he hit something hard. Henry leaned down and pulled out a big, empty gasoline can. What do you know? said Henry. Wow, I can't believe we found this. The man must have poured gasoline on the fire. Spotty must have seen him come into the cellar, said Mike. That's why he didn't like him. They all walked slowly to the mine's office. <clears throat> they went in and told Mr. Carter all about the race. Which dog won the race? Mr. Carter, Carter said laughing. Neither one, answered Mike. Then he told them about the dogs turning around to dig. He showed them the hat and the can. This, this is very important, cried Mr. Carter. You have done very well. It, it won't be long now. Then Benny, Benny suddenly opened his mouth. He looked at Mike and shut it again. Mike nodded, smiling. When the two boys went out of the office, Benny whispered to Mike. You remember Mr. McCarthy, the night watchman? He said he started to go to the fire that night. Yes, said Mike, and he came right back because he saw a man running, and his duty was right by the mine. That's right, said Benny. You see what that means? Oh, Ben, cried Mike, I bet that man was going to blow up the mine, and he set the fire to get everybody to go to the fire. Right, said Benny. I think we ought to tell Mr. Carter right away. The boys went back alone. When they told this new story to Mr. Carter, he said, Good for you, boys. It's a fine idea. I shall go right to work. I'll put two good, two good men to work on it right away. The boys were very pleased with themselves. We are working with the FBI, really, Ben, said Mike proudly. And I suppose the most important thing is not to talk, added Benny. I suppose so, Mike said sadly. It's too bad. We like to talk, Ben. They both looked at each other and smiled. When the children came home to supper, Aunt Jane was delighted. She loved to hear them all talk. Maggie laughed and laughed at Mike and Benny, but they were careful with what they said. The children ate everything on the table. They ate hamburgers and rolls and tomatoes and beans and corn, and they drank many glasses of milk. When everything was gone, Benny said, Aunt Jane, do you know that Mike could stand on his head? Hmm. No, I did not, Aunt Jane said. He can stand on his head forever, said Benny. Now, Benny, not forever, said Henry. But you never saw him, said Benny. <clears throat> I'll show you, cried Mike. He put his head on the rug and slowly lifted himself up in the air. Good, cried Aunt Jane. That's wonderful, Mike. Spotty went over to his young master, lay down and put his head on his paws, and he shut his eyes. Spotty thinks you're going to stay there forever, Mike, said Jesse. I am, said Mike. <laughs> His voice sounded funny, upside down. That's enough, old boy, said Henry. Come on down. Oh, no, cried Benny. We can stand, he can stand there forever, I tell you. <clears throat> but I don't want him to stand there forever, said Aunt Jane. She could not help laughing. It isn't good for you, Mike. Why not, asked Mike. I don't mind. Yes, said Benny, nodding his head. I can stay there all night. Unless he goes to sleep, of course. 
I could go to sleep standing on my head, said Mike upside down. Oh, come on, Mike, said Henry. Get up. You've been there long enough. But Mike did not move. I'm very comfortable, he said. You can all read a book, and I'll just stand on my head and rest. At last, Aunt Jane begged him to stop. Please, Mike, I believe it. I believe you could stand on your, on your head all day. Yes, yes, cried Aunt Jane. Only do come down. It's a wonderful trick. So Mike stood on his feet at last and fixed his hair. I could have stayed there a lot longer. And here's a picture of him standing on his hands. It said he stood on his head, but it looks like to me, according to this picture, he's standing on his hand. So either, well, maybe the illustrator uh, took some liberties or um, Richard Chandler Warner meant that. <clears throat> then Henry made Watch do his tricks. Watch sat up and begged. He spoke. He was a dead dog. He shook hands with everybody. Then Maggie gave him a great big bone. The boys did tricks all that evening. They had only two fights. And then Mike said suddenly, Aunt Jane. Then he stopped. Go on, Aunt Jane said. Oh, I ought to say, Miss Alden, said Mike. No, you can call me Aunt Jane if you would like. So Mike went on. A Aunt Jane, <clears throat> you gave me that newspaper, you know. Yes, yes, I did. Well, you said you didn't look at it. Will you look at it now? Certainly, I, I will if you want me to, said the lady. It it's just the picture, said Mike, taking it out of his pocket. Just look at my brother Pat, and, re and remember, I was right here, standing beside him. But the picture cut me off, Mike pointed. He gave the picture to Aunt Jane. But Aunt Jane suddenly saw the picture of the short man. She frowned. Then she cried. I know that man. I know him, for he is one of the men who tried to buy my ranch. I'd know him anywhere. Henry was excited. That was last summer. It was that time you were all alone in the house. We all went to the store and the men came while we were away. Are you sure, Aunt Jane? Of course I'm sure, cried Aunt Jane. I never liked those three men. I'd know them anywhere. Well, Mike, what do you know about that? shouted Benny. Just then, the telephone rang. It was for Benny. Hello, said Benny. This is Mr. Carter, said the voice. You can tell the rest about this. We found a lot of wires behind the mine. Someone was going to blow it up. Thanks to you and Mike, we got the wires out, and no one's going to blow it up. Good, said Benny, and listen to this. Aunt Jane knows the man in the picture. He is the man that just got out of jail, I bet. What? What? I'll be right down, said Mr. Carter. When he came down, <clears throat> he asked Aunt Jane many questions. At last, he said, we know the man, and we can prove it. I don't think it'll be very long now. We just have to find him. And that's the end of chapter number 12. I hope you guys enjoyed that chapter, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time when we read chapter 13, which is The Party. Enjoy. <laughs>